Well, I had the pleasure to play Final Fantasy 16 for about 30 hours now. It is quite fantastic as a game. If ever you like God of Ragnarok, especially in this channel where we did a lot of videos about it and, and the biggest videos I have on this channel. So if ever you played God of Ragnarok and you loved it, you will absolutely adore Final Fantasy 16. Let me tell you why. And in this video, I'm also going to give you six or seven tips or tricks be able to get a really smooth sailing experience on your Final Fantasy 16 playthrough because there is some things you need to push out before getting into the actual adventure and the amazing, amazing gameplay combat system that they have. My name is Ghost of Red Seas. Today we are looking at Final Fantasy 16, the first review and also the tips and tricks you need. If you like this kind of content, please leave a like, a comment and a subscription. You will also enter a giveaway for Final Fantasy 16. If you sub, it is a free and fantastic way on top of that to help this channel. And I will be really, really happy if you do. All right, so today we are going to talk about around eight things. The first of, uh, of them being the menu setup and uh, before starting, especially the button mapping layout. The layout on this game for the actual combat is quite different from what you know. So my suggestion is in the beginning, before you actually start to play or right after you started playing, go in the menu section, open the controller section and choose from one of the three types that they give you. I personally went with the B type because it was a little bit more natural for me. Having played God of War Ragnarok for a really long time, I felt from out of the three options, that was the best in my opinion, uh, especially that you will have to get into the fray and get to know the actual you know, build and system of this game before really being able to dish out lots and lots of damage. The second thing that we're going to talk about is the basic of combos, importance of aerial combos and finishers. This game relies a lot on your combos and your abilities, but the really fun part about this is the fact that you have a jump button, which we didn't have in God of War Ragnarok. This opens up a lot of verticality in this game and is a fantastic way be able to incorporate new and different combos one of them being the aerial combos the more and more you advance in the story the more you're going to unlock your skills and your abilities but from the basic point what i can suggest you guys is try to understand how the aerial combos work because they do have multiple aerial combo that you can do for example you can see as you saw right there you have multiple back kicks that you can do on your enemies meaning that you can jump and then jump on them to be able to do another combo with them usually the combos goes like r1 r1 r2 so three r1s and one r2 but if you do it in the air you can also do that so three r1s r2 in the air it's going to create a combo but the really nice part about it is if you jump you do three r1s and then you jump again on the monster you can do another 3r1 without any lag delay which is really good because you can continuously damage your enemies and uh, being able to chain those damages really really great the thing is you will even be able to get another jump and this is going to be for the second point because once you understand the basic mechanics of the game you will want to basically master them and the second point is you will need to upgrade and look at your skill tree precisely what I mean by that? The thing is, in this game, they're not really gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen, but they will provide you the information if you search for it, which is nice. What you can do is whenever you go in your skill tree, you can press triangle on any of the skills to be able to give you a description of what it does, what it does as a combo finisher, and what it also do when you master it. So, for example, when we're talking about the actual jump a little bit earlier, whenever you take that skill the first time you'll be able to double jump on an enemy to continue your combos and the third one is whenever you master the idea you'll be able to jump three r1s jump again on the guy three r1s again and then jump again three r1s and three and r2 combo that's 10 combo damage and, and instead of three which is absolutely crazy so upgrading and looking at your skill specifically the ones that have really high damage you can master a lot of the skills but my first tip is to really concentrate on the first circle that you're gonna have the first circle is basically your basic skills and attacks not every one of them are going to be unlocked as you enter the game so take in consideration that you might want to keep some of your aptitude points for later on to be able to get really high power spikes with amazing abilities i do not want to spoil i'm not going to do it but my suggestion is in the beginning do the whole basic skill tree that you have they're not going to be unlocked even master them because they're not that much costly 
And at the end, whenever you are getting way higher level, 30s and 40s, then you'll be able to master your big and powerful attacks. The next point I want to talk to you guys about is the quest lines. The quest line is very, very linear. So what you want to do is you want to go through the main quest. That's basically the actual campaign of the game. I am not done yet. I'm, I'm probably about 80% done of the game. So I'm really, really looking forward to the end. But I have to say the amazing scale of this game is absolutely freaking great like you are basically going to kill buildings <laughs> monsters that have the scale of a building it's it's really 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 cool honestly then what i want to talk about is basically in that quest line you will stumble upon sometimes side quests my suggestion to you is to do the quest that the side quests that have a plus on it you can see it some some of them have an exclamation point other uh, are gonna be like red for the main quest green for the side quest but some of them are green and have a plus inside of the exclamation point these one are gonna unlock special things for your character and for your progression so i strongly suggest you to do it whenever you see them because it's gonna be a big plus to your game a really really important aspect of this game is dodging dodging is gonna be your best friend there's a lot of things that happened that happens a lot at the same time on the screen and whenever you are able to dodge but not not only dodge but dodge at the right time you will basically be able to do a counter attack with it which is always always great because you are not only taking not taking damage but on top of that you are dishing out damage this is exactly what we are talking about later on in the game you will also receive a block ability and then from that block you'll be able to parry it like in god of War ragnarok uh, and parrying is once again very very strong since you're basically nullifying the damage and counter attacking but on top of that blocking and parrying more importantly parrying will be able to parry and block an attack that is usually not blockable so not all the powerful attacks are blockable if you're just holding the block if you time it correctly and you parry the attack you can even parry the powerful attacks which is super super good then the next point is going to be as soon as you can forge a weapon or a sword do it there is not a lot of opportunities to do it usually you're going to see it whenever you kill a big boss you're going to drop a purple item and that purple item will help you to craft the next item which is really really cool in this game because what they did is they're basically going to take your old sword and they're going to upgrade it to the new one so you don't have to like keep your inventory with all the old swords that you got because every time you're going to upgrade your sword it's going to take from the last one which is absolutely great another point the importance of items and companions so you will have a ui on the left side of your screen with some items that you can use potion and high potions you will be able to command issues issue commands like attacking and healing but on top of that what's really really like super nice about this game is that they implemented an item which automatically does that for you so it takes one of your accessory spots so it's not like without its downfalls but it will virtually do the job for you which is <laughs> really really great and the same thing can happen also for potions so as long as you have potions equipped and in your inventory there is an item and accessory that you can put in that will automatically use them for you whenever you get into a health threshold another really good point to do is to use the actual training ground so the hall of virtue in the arete stone whatever you're going to be in the hideaway you will be able to use the training mode and i strongly suggest you to do it because there is a slew of training options that you can put in so regen unlimited break you can even put your limit breaks and add your add your companions in there you can have the actual enemies started to be able to get aggro on you invincibility so you can do your combos and even you know train your blocking abilities like i talked a little bit earlier uh, last thing really really important about the map you can actually transfer and use your waypoints in another way if you are in a map you can open your map and then travel to any obelisk but if you start you press start you can also take a look at the world map even though you are not uh, you know moving between region if you want to then travel to a big other region you can press x to travel to one of the big obelisk or once again click on the map and then you'll be able to do a other waypoint teleport to any other obelisk in a local map that you have already unlocked 